Hey everyone, it's Harkon, it's Gaming. Thank you for tuning in to another video. Today we are going to be taking a look at Project Ascension Season 7 trailer, or as it says, Ascension Reborn Season 7 class as well. I've been playing since Season 3, and to see them come this far, it's, it's really crazy. Uh, it's so cool that they keep these going for us and keep the content coming. So it is a 19 and a half minute video, so let's go ahead and get it started. But before we do, go ahead and I'm gonna link the original video in the description below. Check out that video and show support to that video. They really work hard on these and do such a good job. I believe the, the person who do, does these is Zen. Please correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, go ahead and check out their video. And if you want to watch it again with me reacting to it, you can come back. But other than that, again, let's get it started. 19 and a half minutes. Looks like there's going to be a lot in here. So let's check it out. For a thing to have any hope of greatness, it must transform and okay. ascend. Hear this call. For too long, you've been unable to realize your hero's potential, weighed down by worlds that keep you bound by class. You deserve to have an impact on this beloved world, to express yourself on Azeroth in any way that you desire. From delving into the deepest dungeons to crafting the rarest items, conquering the strongest villains, True. or risking it all in high-risk PvP. You Let's see if they have anything for high-risk. ...than the complete rebirth of Classless WoW. Season 7 was built for you to forge your Classless hero and embark on limitless adventure. <clears throat> Welcome, heroes, to the next chapter of Classless WoW. See what you got. Of course, they put a human as the front and forefront of the Join us disgusting. On this brand new adventure, a fresh seasonal realm where you'll start with thousands of other players, progressing through expansions and experiencing the entire classless adventure from start to finish. We are starting with classic. Chance for new heroes and veterans alike to begin anew on ascension, offering an opportunity to learn the ins and outs of classless WoW before merging into the main realm at the season's end. From the remastered draft system and brand new prestige mode. Don't stare, guys. Don't stare. Reborn high risk open world. New crafting overhaul. And incredible. Ooh, crafting overall. overall. That's what I'm excited for. Mythic. Is the first stride on a journey Let's see. You got me hooked already. Join us to cover the new features in detail so that you can dive into the newest chapter of Ascension Classless WoW. Season 7 is a step towards a complete remaster of Classless WoW. With the release date set for August 6th, Let's this fucking go. tempered with the knowledge, <laughs> lessons, and successes that the game has experienced Great timing, by the way. five years. Every upgrade is designed to help you achieve Ascension's ultimate goal of allowing you to discover and build your fantasy class. It's the human scum. With Season 7, you'll embark so on a dwarf for a gnome, at least. ...and overcome the challenges you uncover, both those you find and those <clears> that find you. As you power up and ascend to greater heights, you'll experience the nostalgia of a beloved familiar world, while at the same time discovering it anew with the signature classless tools. That looked cool. Draft mode rises from the ashes. Uh, draft mode. A lot of people have been wanting draft mode back. And uh, okay, before I continue, sorry, I don't. I, it's the only time I'm gonna pause it. Again, I will be talking through this trailer. It is a reaction. I will be talking through it. So again. Watch their their video if you don't want anyone talking over it or anything like that. So yeah. <laughs> Using past seasons and community feedback, this epic game mode has been reborn as a journey to discover and refine your champion. We've taken the best parts of draft mode. New UI for that looks sick. Doubled down on what was amazing to give this system exactly what it needed. Double down, to nerf double down. Your classless champion. Heroes typically step into classless Azeroth with a vision of the champion they'd like to play. Whether it's a monstrous berserker or a calm and cool frost wizard, the goal of draft mode nah. is to give you the tools to guide your hero towards that fantasy. Dude, they did so, such a good job with this. Of three skills every I think. Two levels. Building your hero, gaining I think they changed the UI just a little bit. I don't know how the card looks. The draft mode is about <clears> discovering your hero. And with the new card rarity system, you'll know exactly how to mix and match to build your personal legend. In order to feel good about building your classless hero, you need to have both the freedom to discover and the knowledge to know when you found something really special. Mm -hmm. With the new card rarity system, each time you go to draft a new spell, you'll notice a rarity oh. associated with each skill. Just like the items you're it's familiar like Hearthstone with, Ultra Rare! Uncommon, rare <laughs> epic, or legendary. Please let there be a voice or a sound file when you click the cards. That'd be sick. Strike, incinerate, and the like. You'll see them most often to make sure that you find the foundational skills of your build. Rare cards are typically passive power, 
like True Shot Aura and Water Shield. Okay. Epic cards are hard CC like Blast Wave, Shadow Fury, and Death Coil. Finally, legendary cards are immunity Pick to lock. utility spells that have universal appeal in any build. Spells like Divine Shield, Ice Block, Blink, and Deterrence fall into this category. Using these clear, familiar markers of power, new and veteran That's heroes cool. alike can instantly recognize when they've discovered a strong skill. <clears throat> you can choose the uncommon abilities that are crucial to your fantasy build while augmenting your power with the occasional epic and even legendary <laughs> ability. Shit rolls. In this way, you can refine your hero to the heights of power, gaining the skills you need to dominate That's pretty cool. I, I like that so far. A lot of people aren't going to like the RNG, but that's, that's what it's just all about. also serves as the foundation for a simple but game-changing mechanic, one that brings clarity and precision to the draft system. To put it simply, the more of a rarity type you have, the harder it is to get more. This Who says that quote, though? I need a name. To heroes looking to build their champion. Now, when drafting your hero, you'll know exactly how the choices you make impact your hero. If you pick that death coil, you'll know that you're a bit less likely to see epics in future pulls. If you start ah. building, do so knowing that the chance of finding divine shield or ice block is slightly decreased. In this way, but it's possible. You can understand and even influence RNG to have more control over the cards that you see. Likewise, if you're searching for a particular epic card, you'll know that unlearning an epic skill that you already have increases your likelihood of seeing epic cards okay. in future pulls. Not only that, but with niche and circumstantially strong abilities largely being of common rarity rather than completely random, you'll see a much wider variety of the core skills you need to realize almost any build you can think Pretty of. Pretty cool. With skill rarity, the uncommon cards are plentiful, letting you grab core spells. How many like legendary can you have? Can you get super lucky? Any sort of waiting or pooling. Or is there a cap? I don't know if it said. Which leads us to variety. Variety is the key to discovery. Not having variety leads to explosive shots. True. And the overall meta on ascension. The best builds were typically the ones you could plan for. In draft mode, which included a fair bit of random play, it's only natural to base builds around abilities that you have control over. Mm -hmm. Either structuring true, builds around true. what skills you could roll at level one, or in the past, designing your entire build around pickable end game talents. Case in point, explosive shot. Solution. <laughs> Ditch pickable talents and give heroes more skill cards. Okay. All talent abilities can now okay. be drafted and I like that. skill cards. In season seven's draft mode, you'll have access to four total skill All cards. All abilities can now basic and two golden. These rare items can be obtained at high levels and used at level one. When used, you'll be guaranteed to pull the ability on the card as one of your three drafted skills at the appropriate level. Mm -hmm. With skill cards, you can steer your draft build in the direction you want it to go by stacking the deck and guaranteeing essential abilities. Okay, okay, yes. Consistency that will open up fresh so, a little bit less RNG, of course, but... ...abilities just to finish a build. Rather than having endgame talents as pickable, every skill in the game will be available to either draft or pick up as a skill card. That is really interesting. Let's Level see how that works. Like how that goes. experiences on Ascension, delving into dungeons, meeting other adventuring players, and the consistent feel of progression makes slaying foes and exploring new corners of the world feel exciting and rewarding. But in the past, graduating from leveling meant you could never return to that precious time. And if you wanted to, the game incentivized making a new character mm -hmm. rather than developing the one you had. No longer with the new prestige system. Okay, prestige. prestige I, system someone talked about this. Set your hero to level one, wiping your current spec so you can relive the leveling adventure. Not only does this give you a chance to draft a better build, but you'll earn a massive chest of spoils. Locks, multis, okay. And gear when you reach cool, so you, they're incentivizing you to stay on one character. Serve the dual function and I, I honestly and end game progression. don't. Additionally, since you set your hero back to level one, you I don't mind. To use skill cards to upgrade your draft build and steer your hero towards your ultimate. So I have like fucking 300 named, <laughs> 300 different characters on one server. When you prestige, you reset your active build giving you the chance to change up skill cards and draft something better. What's more, your other specs remain untouched. This yeah, that is that is good. Individual builds while keeping your other specs locked and safe. Now, rather than having a million alts, that's a good change. Can prestige, 
refining itself through multiple incarnations until it rises as the I'm totally down having one character to be. honestly refine your draft build and gear up for the end game with the prestige system as a final draft note heroes can still get hands of fate to redraft individual abilities Completing quests from Silas Darkmoon in major cities is a surefire way to get three hands of fate per quest. In addition, and you know, you might see the person that ganked you so you can double down at level one again and just gank him, gank him when he, you know, <laughs> gank him when he's a little bit higher than that. Control over their champions as possible while still avoiding the drawbacks and unfun meta. Do enjoy that. I think that'll draft your hero and refine them through hands of fate, skill cards, and prestige mode. You'll see I'm gonna pause it. Sorry. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. I want to say something. I'll say at the end. While also discovering things you didn't even know you wanted, with multiple ways to refine your. I like the system so far. I really do. Each and every one of you, whether you're. I don't see any many problems with it. Starting out, can realize your personal class. I don't mind staying on the same character. The best build they can will be able to use the rarity system. Keeping the multi spec is pretty sick. Prestige mode, I like it. You get rewards. You can earn and discover as many epic and legendary skills as you desire, outfitting your hero with incredible power. With the card rarity system, there is no limit. You can always roll better skills and climb ever higher on your journey to the top. There's always a limit. High risk was once one of the All right, <laughs> here we go. The, <laughs> the, thrill of battle, the adrenaline of risking gear against others and the excitement of taking down real foes and earning incredible Hell yeah. through your PvP Fuck power, the alliance. Many a champion to the blood He's getting smacked. Of the high risk that mod looks sick. This titan of mechanics is finally getting the attention it deserves. With season 7. Of course you get 2v1 to alliance. 2v1 to horde. High Risk Reborn completely transforms the ways that heroes of all types can interact with the world. Where once existed only deadly combat, now blooms dozens of new dimensions. Is that a chest? With Azeroth and the heroes who call her home. With season six, I am a whore for chests. The power for your hero can influence the entire Ascension community through new events, consumables, craftable items, new item enchantments, monster nests, rare creatures, hidden chests. They're going all out. Okay. This opens up both the high risk environment and the greater realm economy. Good. Incentivize high risk. Champions to emerge, compete, and succeed. Crafters now have brand new item enchantments, potions, flasks, and gear to create. Dude, that's cool. Collect and refine rare new high risk ingredients. Oh, I'm so glad they're bringing professions into this too. Vicious new notorious monsters, and the wolves of high risk can still travel the world, seeking out the combat they so crave. This is there you high go. risk reborn. Thor knows how to gank. Always gank when they're fighting something. That is the perfect gank right there by the horde. Deep within the wilds <laughs> of the high risk open world lie new powerful materials waiting to be harvested. These are high risk ingredients. Brand new crafting items oh, that man. forge the undisputed highest tier of foods, potions, flasks, enchantments, scopes, and even gear. From meat to cloth, herbs to ore. Every profession has new, unique materials to claim, and these pair with brand new recipes to create the best craftable items in the game. The Interesting. The best, recipes, best in the, the game. Are found in dungeons and raids, and the ingredients are only obtainable <clears throat> by stepping into high risk. Any I'm sorry, I missed that. Say that again. The catch: the best recipes for these items are found in dungeons and raids. Oh. Are only obtainable so you gotta down. work together. Any hero can gather high risk. No, or dungeon and high risk. Any hero can stumble on one of the new recipes. Both are completely tradable and completely sellable. So if you oh don't God. Want to go out and get them yourself, you can easily buy them from someone who does. Likewise, for if billions of gold, with something you don't want, you can sell it. This is where high risk and no risk heroes can help each other out. If you're brave enough to risk life, limb, and gear in the high-risk open world, you can venture out, outwit high-risk hunters, and harvest high-risk materials to bring back, providing resources to heroes who prefer to stay in no-risk. By the same token, heroes focused That's on good. diving into dungeons and raids can find the new rare recipes to either learn themselves or sell to someone else. This I, I like that. A, not, a lot of people aren't going to like that, but I, I do. Focused PvE champions and high risk focused PvP heroes. Because one collects the ingredients, the other finds I'm more no risk now, but the high risk I, high risk people are gonna gonna help us out. Or maybe I can go in high risk and get both. There's that option. 
to benefit from the high risk open world, allowing any champion, no matter what their specialty, to play a like dangerous world. More than that, it allows heroes to play a role in the entire Ascension economy, either finding, refining, crafting, or selling the various parts of a process that empowers everyone. Good adventure requires discovery, something you can uncover, find, and didn't know you wanted. With High Risk Reborn, heroes who venture out into the open world, whether looking to hunt or gather, can <clears throat> look forward to the possibility of additional spoils. Monster nests, hidden chests, and notorious monsters. Hidden chests, dude. On occasion, during their travels, heroes may... Dwarf Biss? Race? Features, a monster nest or a hidden chest. Monster nests are location where a little bit of bait can be your ticket to epic rewards. Find a nest, lure out a powerful rare foe, and slay it for high-risk ingredients and possibly even blood-forged loot. <laughs> Shows the shittiest loot in the game. <laughs> that can be opened using the various keys crafted by engineers and blacksmiths. Keys Ooh, interesting. And keeping one or two on you at all times ensures that you can crack open a chest. I like that a lot. And reveling in the spoils they offer. However, be warned. Both bait and keys can be stolen by players that make sense. High risk, so be on the lookout for heroes looking to prey on your preparations. In the same vein, heroes slaying monsters in the world beware. The scent of blood draws out dangerous creatures looking to feed. When slaying enemies in a zone, you now have a chance to encounter a notorious monster. So a random, ah, oh, cool. Rare enemy so as you're farming, you have a dude. That's pretty cool. In a zone. Every zone has unique notorious monsters, and if you encounter one, you can bring it down to snag big loot. Monster nests, hidden chests, and notorious monsters serve as more potential excitement that you can discover while in high risk. If you think you have what it takes to out I like it. I like they're they're pushing high risk. Adventure out into the open Some of the stuff they tried in TBC didn't work out, but I feel like this is this is a lot better. A limitless conquest against mythic system okay this is this is this is the, this the juicy part for me born in mythic plus temper your hero in the fires of pve with season seven a complete mythic plus system arrives on ascension <laughs> that is Black gonna be cool onward, now not only has its normal version but a full cascade of heroic mythic zero and mythic plus difficulty Grab your keystone, gather your allies, <laughs> and tear through the foes that stand in your path. At the end, incredible treasures await you. On I six, fucking like it. Rock depths onwards has a mythic zero difficulty. Should you manage to clear it, you'll be rewarded with a keystone for a random dungeon. This is your key to that dungeon's mythic plus. Using the keystone, you can activate it as the group leader to transform. I wonder what happens if you fail it. Is it going to be like, wow, where it breaks? Or is it going to reset? I think in WoW, at first it broke, but now it just goes down a rank. Affixes are additional effects that provide an even greater challenge for heroes in Mythic Plus Dungeons. They're going all fucking out, man. every week. Meaning you can compete against your friends and rival guilds to see who can progress the furthest in the I really like this. From there, the rules are simple. Beat the timer and your keystone upgrades by okay. plus one. Fail and you'll lose. Gotcha, it does not break. The higher you upgrade your keystone, the better loot you'll Just loses a tier. Whether you beat the timer or not, finishing the dungeon awards a personal loot box. With loot okay. The same so even if you fail, you want to you wanna defeat the dungeon. So if you start it with a plus three keystone, you'll get plus three loot even if you lose against the clock opening your purse gotcha. allows you to choose the type of gear you want from tank to healer to i am getting excited second now, after second there are also mystic rune and mystic orb oh not even more excited fuck only gain so many personal spoils per week and grabbing the orb or rune option doesn't count as one of them in this way you can still run mythics with allies catching up and get rewards for doing so without having to pick up a personal spoils crate of a lower keystone than what you want using keystones heroes can delve into the deepest depths of the mythic plus system murlocs more powerful gear not murlocs killer bees because uh, well stationary oh that's so fucking cool casters are gonna get fucked move towards flex normal flex heroic or ascended difficulty rates 
with season seven. No I wonder how the mythic stuff is going to scale with the raids. There's something to help you like the, the loot. And take the next step towards ascension. Thanks for tuning in to the overview for Ascension Season 7. We hope you're excited. Newcomers and veterans alike. I like it. I like it. Your first time. Season 7 drops in less than a week. But you don't have to wait to start your adventure. You can download the game right now on ascension.gg. Mm -hmm. The time has come to embark on a journey to discover this familiar world in a brand new way. Draft your hero, forge your identity, and oh, man. the worlds of Azeroth and beyond. Be sure to like and subscribe to catch all the upcoming information for the new season. And until next time, heroes, take it easy. He says that, but everyone's going to be fucking sweating on August 6th. <laughs> uh, again, congratulations, Ascension team. Really great trailer. Looks very promising. Um, I enjoy all the systems that you've se that I've seen. The, uh, the prestige mode, uh, the new draft system, how the cards are going to work. I wonder how many like legendaries are locked to your character. I'm not sure if it actually said that. Uh, maybe someone who gets super lucky and get all the immunities in the game. <laughs> and uh, all the CC. But again, you want that balance. Uh, card system. A lot of people were wanting draft mode back. And they not only brought it back, but improved on it. So I think that that's definitely a win. It's going to be really cool seeing how people are able to build. Uh, it's always cool to see how people build uh, their characters. And now... You can keep the same character, keep the same name instead of making like 30 different alts. But there's still that option to make the alt if you want. I really like that. And you can save your your other specs, which is which is perfect. They, they really thought about everything there. Um, going into the high risk stuff. Again, I haven't done high risk in a, a while. I've mostly been paying AR-52 and rating. But I really think these do incentivize people to go in high risk. Hopefully people aren't as scared to go in high risk. I mean... There's always going to be those those uh, SVKs out there fucking murdering everyone. But hopefully this still incentivizes people just to farm. Maybe find a random spot and farm to get that random mob, like that random uh, mob to spawn. I forgot what they were called already. But you guys know. Um, and then just get those high risk ingredients so you can work with the people who go into the dungeons. I think that's that's really cool how they're finally bringing both together. Now, the, now it's not going to be like a... Sp well, we'll see. It, it, it looks like they're leaning towards more bringing them together. Before, of course, it was split, high risk, no risk. They had they wanted nothing to do with each other. But now this is going to bring them a little bit a little bit closer together, which I really do I really do like. Brings the community closer together in general. I do like going into dungeons, getting the recipes, whereas the high risk boys and girls go out there and get the um, the gathering stuff and materials, and it can all be sold, which works perfect. Uh, I really like that system. I like the hidden chest. I mean, I might try more high risk now just for those chests. Maybe I'll go dwarf this time. I don't know if dwarf uh, racial works with the hidden chest, but that would be super OP. And then going into the Mythic Plus system, we've been waiting for this for a while. And I'm finally glad it's here. It looks, it looks like it's going to be so much fun. Uh, so much fun. There's going to be a more competitive PvE going on, not just with the raids, but with pushing those Mythic keys. So... Yeah, I, I I can't wait, honestly. And it's going to be really interesting to see all of those uh, different affixes. I don't know if they... We saw the B one. It looked like they had a one where you like spawn murlocs, which is cool. They, they've really they've really gone all out. And I think if, you, if you're thinking about returning or if you're a new player watching this, I don't know how you got to this video, but I think now is the time to try it. Uh, perfect timing as well. Uh, as you guys know, I've been playing a lot of New World, and New World beta is ending on the 3rd. This is coming out on the 6th, so it's going to give us a lot of time to play this and just have fun with Season 7, both PvE and PvP. But uh, let me know what you guys think. I, I really I, I'm, I'm honestly super excited, as I always am when Ascension comes out with a new trailer. So, great job on the trailer. I think it's Zen. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Congratulations, Ascension team, and make sure to watch their video if you i don't know why i'm saying this again at the end but make sure to watch their video or even just go there give them a view and give them a like because they do deserve it but other than that we'll keep continuing to watch more and uh, see what more they have to offer for this new season but definitely going to be playing it and i'll see y'all when the time august 6 right so i'll see y'all on august 6 but i appreciate everyone take care peace